much for hopping on with me. Um, I know I'm super excited to talk to you about you and everything you've been through and where you are now. Do you mind just letting listeners know what you what you're doing now and where you started? Yeah. Okay. So um, I um, I'm a blogger at the moment, which is like a mummy blogger um, under the name Kickstart Baby. Um, and where that began was uh, with the struggle of infertility. So um, I had unexplained infertility. Um, that's what we were dealing with, me and my husband. Um, and basically from that, I logged my entire um, IVF journey and beyond um, in quite an open and honest manner. So I didn't, I didn't flower it up. There were no holes barred. I kind of just said it how it was. Um, and bit by bit, I sort of met, you know, quite a lot of women all over the world, really, um, that were, were going through the same struggles. Mm -hmm. um so from my story I'm you know I still do that now so um now I'm a twin mum um through IVF um I've been blessed with two boys Ronnie and Arnie who are almost 20 months mm -hmm. um so yeah so that's where I am right now and that's sort of the background as to how it began really excellent how long ago was that when kind of you started kickstart babies so kickstart babies began literally as we were sort of embarking on IVF um and that was in 2013 um so um the summer of 2013 is when we started our IVF process so previous to that we'd gone through um three failed IUIs um which is similar to IVF but not as invasive um and yes yeah, so I thought you know in a blog sort of under a decoy name nobody knew who I was so I could be as honest and open as, as I wanted to um which was really it was my sort of coping mechanism actually going through IVF yeah because I was going to ask what prompted you to start kickstart babies in the first place yeah I just think um I'm, I'm kind of like I wear my heart on my sleeve I you know I don't get embarrassed very easily um and it was a massive thing to go through I wanted to document it so that I could look back on you know for me to sort of look back on whether it be a success story or not I wanted somehow for my journey to perhaps inspire others to sort of document the same because I know that that's what helped me get through really mm -hmm. when I was having a bad day I just used to sort of blurt it all out online and I felt like a weight had been lifted yeah it's kind of like a journal but obviously a public yeah, journal it is yeah that's right yeah yeah it's pretty powerful Mm -hmm. yeah it's been it's been a huge it's a huge part of me really of who I am and I think it's great looking back now I've got all that to show the boys you know when they're older you know IVF is so fascinating and there's a lot of fear that's involved with it and people think oh my god you know poor you you've been through that I feel really lucky because it's you know I've got an into I've got pictures of them as embryos as eggs even you know and that's amazing for me to see that and to, to be able to show them yeah, absolutely. And now, because now you're kind of out in the open of who you are. Yeah. And yeah. when did that transition happen? When did you, was it always a secret or when did you start telling people? Um, so I think I realized really, I, I became really proud of where we sort of, where we got to um, when we had a magazine article printed um, about our journey. And actually seeing it on paper, I was so proud of what we'd been through. And I just thought, you know, like there's so many women that go through it. A lot of people that I know since have actually come out of, you know, with my name and things. Um, and I just thought then, I thought, no, you know, what, it, I'm, here I am sort of saying I shouldn't be ashamed of it. Yeah, I was hiding behind this name, you know. So I thought, no, it's time. So I'd sort of shared that with the world, really, our friends and family and just bit by bit. I set up like a Facebook page and things like that so mm -hmm. um so yeah I mean some of the ladies on there I've you know been connected with since before um Instagram before I even started Kickstart Babies through fertility apps and things like that so you know I've spoke to people all over the over the world you know through doing that like you you know I'm speaking to you now that wouldn't have happened so yeah it's been a, it's been a great journey yeah and I know now I mean it helps that you have so many women supporting you and that are like-minded but what was the initial reaction when you started to share and that people didn't know what was going on in your life? What was, was it scary? How was it? What a great, scary, yeah, it was scary because I think, um, and I still get it now, I think people, some people, only a fraction of, sort of think, oh, you know, that you shouldn't really share that sort of information and mm -hmm. you know, people have the opinion not to hide behind it, but that that's something personal for someone to go through. And that's quite right. You know, there are parts that I, you know, that I wouldn't say or, mm -hmm. um, 
you know, I'm not benefiting anything from that for, for holding that back. And that is my way of coping. And that, you know, that I'm really proud of all of us that we've, you know, we've got through it and it was hard. It wasn't easy. And I'm really proud that we've, we've come through it, you know, and it's a positive. So we were really lucky. We were one of the lucky ones. Yeah. Yeah. Cause you, I mean, documenting everything, there are women that can, like they're at different stages within their own journey that they can draw the parallels to within your journey. Do you have a lot of women that reach out to you? Yeah. I'm sure. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, I always say on my blog that I encourage people to message me direct because you know, some people and I completely understand that not everybody um, takes the same approach as me and they're not, you know, they perhaps don't want to share with the world, you know, what goes on behind closed doors during IVF. But um yeah, you know, so I get a lot of messages um, from women are they're about to embark on it that are frightened because it is quite, it is invasive, you know, and there's a lot um, of emotion, not just the fact about you becoming a family. You know, me and my husband, we, we, we've been together 10 years now. Um, and that journey, if we reached, you know, IVF, it was a really tough one to go through. So, um, yeah, so it, I just felt like it was something that should be shared. Um, and you know that it seems to be a lot of a lot of women out there don't understand um if if they've not gone through IVF they they don't understand really what has we've been through sort of thing and I kind of feel like I keep saying I'm so proud of us that I I want to shout from the rooftops it wasn't easy you know but we got there you know we we kept going until we got what we wanted and more you know we wanted a baby and we come out with two so um yeah and I kind of it's it's been an elephant in the room really for us for years before we actually went down the infertility uh, the fertility assisted fertility route um even as actively trying it for people i mean we were married so we were close we shared everything from the fertility and the fact that hang on we've not actually made a baby yet it was an elephant in the room and it was quite quite frightening to think you know we're gonna have to go through this and it could it tears people apart and i can see why I can see why it's a lot of pressure on a marriage because I think the first thing we got when we were married was, oh, you're going to have a baby. And people feel like it's their business. Like our fertility is everybody's business. Um, and a lot of women will, will understand that as well. It's not so much the pressure on yourself. Other people commenting in on why you've not had a baby yet. That is, it's so hard. And that's why it's important really for people to be comfortable to talk about it because it's not it shouldn't be taboo it's something that they're going through they should be proud of it and just if anything it stops all the comments you know as soon as you say actually we are trying we're going through IVF so mm -hmm. and that's what I find so ironic is that everyone feels like it's okay to ask when are you having a baby or when is it when when's your next one coming along but then we're so taboo and close doors and keep everything personal in terms of infertility or if you're struggling through these things and it's just so hard for women to have such a disconnect because then they can't openly speak about what they're going through but then at the same time everyone's asking them yeah. right mm -hmm. it is it's a huge pressure on people i mean like before we got married we'd gone through um we, we lost my mum quite suddenly. So during the time that we were trying for a baby, mm -hmm. um, other things happened in life. You know, it had to take a back seat. My mum found out she was poorly. Um, and we lost her um, quite quite soon after when we found out she was poorly. Um, and Keith and I had brought forward our wedding. So we were due to get married in June 2012. But we ended up getting married in January. Mm -hmm. um, and it kind of that was what made us think do you know what we we can't keep carrying on thinking it might happen it might not like it was like a wake-up call for us that life was so short mm -hmm. um you know let's just let's talk about it you know let's let's go and see what's happening and um and like i say we would we dealt with unexplained infertility um and if i'm being really honest i think um for years i kind of thought because keith's nine years older than me my husband um, I just presumed, oh, you know, it, it's going to be something wrong with him. And that's what, another thing that people presume we've been through IVF, something's been wrong with one of us. Or, and it's not, you know, we had unexplained. So I don't, I still don't know what that means. I just obviously know that they don't know. We'll never know, you know. Um, but, you know, it's, it's, it's been, it has been one hell of a journey. But it's, 
it's like I say, we've been one of the lucky ones. Yeah. Do you have a particular low point that sticks out to you that you remember as this is so hard and yeah? Yeah. So um, we had, when we were going through the IVF, um, we kind of had a plan in place that if, if this round didn't work, you know, we kind of had to draw a line somewhere because I know people, I know people personally that have gone through it and spent a lot of money. And obviously here in the UK, um, I actually had, um, we got, obviously with the NHS, we were offered three rounds of IUI and one IVF. Okay. Um, and our plan was, if that didn't work, we would save, we would have one round of IVF that we paid for. And then we'd see, um, and during the IVF, um, everything was going great. I, I had a real positive mindset going through IVF because it was a bit different. I kind of thought this was the real thing. I knew it would happen. Um, but I had 21 eggs collected, 12 embryos. And on the day of transfer, we had two transferred and obviously the, the rest were remaining to be frozen. Mm -hmm. So I thought if it didn't work, we'd still have them to fall back on. Um, and the day after um, our transfer, I had a phone call to say that none of the embryos that we had the day before had survived um, and wouldn't be frozen. So we literally, all our eggs were in one basket and it was kind of, I didn't want to go through the meds again, the emotions. And it wasn't until that day, I think it really hit me just what we were going through. You know, this, it was, it plays with your mind. You, you can have one day, you can be up here and think, you know, I've got this, this is fine. Everything, my body's doing what I should be doing. And the next day you get a phone call to say, actually those fantastic embryos you had yesterday, they're not going to work, they're, you know, they're gone. And you think, wow, that's, there's a lot of points in there that, um, that were really, really hard to deal with. Yeah. That one in particular, I remember crying in the middle of the supermarket um, because someone said, hello, Daisy, are you okay? And I was just like, no, you know what? I can't be strong, you know, I'm not happy. This is, you know, I'm really scared. Um, but, you know, it's... I know people personally, and I've come across a lot of women on, on my blog, um, have gone through that time and time again. And I honestly, hats off to them because I, I haven't got that in me. Obviously, I don't know what I would have done had it not worked for us first time. Um, but it doesn't even bear thinking about because the emotional impact, not let alone the physical, you know, you, your body goes through such a lot. Um, the hormones, you know, the injections every day. Um, it becomes it becomes part of your life, you know, and you, you kind of you're just a number. It's really quite difficult to to get your head round, and you have to be in a really good place. I think mentally before you go through it, you have to be realistic. Mm -hmm. um, and people say to me, you know, oh, I don't be positive. Like I've got a good feeling, but I don't sort of hope that. Do you know what? I, I, you can you can be realistic as long as you're realistic that you know there's no guarantees then you can be positive because I, I for one think that that you know is a massive part in you know a positive visualization is something that I worked with I had acupuncture um and that is a huge part of it I think if you go in there negative thinking this isn't going to work I do feel like my sister always says to me, oh, you know, the universe hears you. And I do believe that a positive mindset is, is key. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. What's it like for your body going through that? Um, to be honest, um, again, it's different for everybody because some people have, to, you know, different fears of needles or whatever. For me, physically, I dealt with it really, really well. So, I'm, you know, I wasn't phased by the injuries um hormone wise I wasn't you know I wasn't beaten up too much by it um my days but if anything I think it was the pregnancy after um that took its toll on my body obviously I'm only small and when they told me I was having twins of course I was overjoyed but I was really scared because I thought how on earth am I going to carry two children at once but I did you know your body is an amazing thing and um yeah you know we managed it I had the boys um, I did have them early, um, but th you know, that's a risk of IVF. So they said to us, um, all the way, all the way along, you would only have one embryo put back because they're trying to reduce the multiple birth rate. Um, so we hadn't even thought about, you know, having two put back. 
And it wasn't until the morning of transfer we got the option. They actually said to us, would you like one or two at the back? And I was like, what? You know, I can't believe like, I've got, what, 15 minutes to decide whether I carry twins or not. Oh, my God. And, um, obviously, it was the best decision I've ever made. I can't imagine lying as a single mum, like a singleton mum, should I say. Um, but, you know, there are lots of risks involved, but there are with natural pregnancies as well. I think it's only because with IVF you get all this information and all these, you know, is lots of paper with all this information that's actually quite frightening. So once I was pregnant with twins, it was, you know, you're twice as likely to this. You're, it, it's just a lot of information overload. Um, but I had the boys, um, I had the boys early. So I had them at 31 weeks and four days. Um, and they were three pound ten and three pound fifteen, um, but they were fine. So Ronnie had a little bit of breathing difficulty, um, but we were in the right place. We were in neonatal, um, and they had great care there. Um, but Arnie came out absolutely fine. He had no issues. So um, there was a lot of worry throughout the pregnancy. But like I say, that information overload. I'd read it. Oh, this could happen. That could. Happen. But that can happen with a natural pregnancy as well. So. Um, yeah there's it's it's one of them things really but I've been really lucky the boys are thriving they've done so well considering they were prem babies mm -hmm. um it took six weeks to get them home actually so Arnie came home at three weeks old um and Ronnie came home at six weeks old so um you know we had to go through all that as well so it was kind of like to get them actually home with us it was a a massive Thing for us we sat here thinking wow you know what we've gone through to get to this point it's it's amazing so those mums out there that or the ladies that are still going through IVF or you know xyz round hats off to you because I just don't know how they've done it I really don't they've got strength in them that they don't see you know in themselves but they're tough cookies because I hats off I, I couldn't do it I don't think I could yeah and it's amazing how many women do go through it and how they how they make it through i mean multiple rounds and are able to do everything it's amazing how how is your relationship with your husband going through everything because i know it's hard to say that again sorry i said how is your relationship with your husband going through everything oh yeah brilliant um it's what it's a bit cliche but it has brought us back to, you know together because there was a point through ivf obviously you think you you, you know you've got each other's back and things but you you kind of end up it becomes, I don't know, quite um, it's stressful. Um, and for, for Keith, you know, to see me going through that, he desperately wanted to give me a baby. I desperately wanted to give him a baby. Um, I, I think subconsciously we were giving each other a bit of a blame game. Like I felt guilty putting him through IVF because although he really wanted children, I think um, for, a, for a man or, well, for, for what I know of for Keith, it was it was a real hard thing to go through for, for them as well. We but in all this, a lot of my kickstart babies, I'm constantly like I say I or me. I can't speak on you know his behalf, but it's it's hard on them as well. And we do forget that you know we do forget that. But but now fantastic, like he's made the best dad you know, which is exactly what I I could see in him, mm -hmm. and that's why I married him. You know, I knew he'd be a fantastic dad to the boys. Um, and he dotes on them and he dotes on me and I couldn't be I couldn't be happier and I'm, I'm really thankful he's, he, he works hard and he's a good man and so yeah it does it it, it brings us back together I think because we've kind of we feel like they're the missing puzzle piece you know to, mm -hmm. to our marriage or our relationship so yeah although I, I still like more but I don't think he wants any more yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> really talk him into it <laughs> Yes, I'm sure. Does anyone ask whether there's more uh, for you, or do people ask if you want more? Or yeah, never say never. Yeah, I mean, there's definitely room for more. I think for, I would never go through IVF again, okay. just because I've already got, I've got the boys, and I, you know, I just wanted a baby, and I got two, so I feel doubly blessed. Um, but you know, I would love. I, I still see me with another one. Um, Keith would take some persuading I think okay. but you know never say never I'll yeah. work on him <laughs> yeah. Yeah. well stay tuned for that one yeah that's it episode two kicks yeah. up baby <laughs> yeah. do you feel like you've changed going through all this what's it 
as a person? Um, yeah, massively. And um, so for me personally, it's been a healing process. So like I say, when I lost my mum, there was like a huge void and I felt uh, very much like, you know, that what, what have I got left to sort of to do? Like Keith and I had kind of, um, you know, we'd been through a massive thing losing mum and then to go through that as well. Um, but we see the, the IVF side of it as a positive and it did mend a broken heart, to be quite honest. So, um, but me personally, um, I used to be really quite um, confident, you know, I'd talk to anybody and things like that. It has, I, I talk quite a lot about anxiety on my blog um, because obviously when my boys arrived, so did a bundle of anxiety, really. Mm -hmm. um, and not, not as how I am as a mum, like I'm really confident in how I mother them. I think, you know, I do the best I can and that's all I can do. Um, but it, on a social level, I think because obviously you don't go out as often and um, obviously my my focus has changed, my priorities have changed. I find it really difficult in social situations. So like just walking into a supermarket, I go bright red if, I'm, you know, if I'm speaking to somebody. Hmm. Um, so confidence wise, it has knocked my confidence um on some levels but um but yeah you know it's it's mended a broken heart for me and that's the main thing really for me i you know there's, there was light at the end of the tunnel and it got me through a really bad place so yeah so, wow and now that you're sharing your story and i know you started going through everything but you started sharing your story more for you and as a personal journey or has that transformed over the years now yeah so it's changed a bit now so um I, I i logged obviously the the journey itself and that was originally for me mm -hmm. um once i actually reached um a point where i had a pregnant a positive pregnancy test and we were then you know going into pregnancy mm -hmm. that was more uh, that was i shared that sort of on my blog um more for other people so what you know what symptoms i was experiencing um so that people that are going through it could perhaps be, you know, like tally it and think, oh, I'm feeling that today. That could be a good thing, you know, or well, that's normal. Um, and then again, for me, through the pregnancy, I documented my bump picture. So I used to have a wall update and I used to stand by the same wall and have a growing bump every week. Wow. Um, and I, but no, I, I kind of, I've stopped doing it for me right now. I do see it as a green boy's future. I mean, like, they've basically got, like, memoirs, really, to look back on, um, which is a brilliant thing, because, I mean, there's nothing like looking at photos of you growing up, you know, thinking, wow, that's how I was. I've literally, I think I take a picture of them every day, which is really bad. Yeah. But I see it as a great thing. Um, and I've carried on sort of documenting. I, it's crossed my mind whether I'm doing the right thing or not. Um, just because I am quite conscious that um, I spend a lot of time on it. I do spend a lot of time on my kickstart babies, but I'm really passionate about it. Um, and so I've decided to carry on doing that for other people. So I'm not so much doing it for myself anymore. Mm -hmm. I can just see I, I, there's no better feeling than hearing someone say, do you know what? I read that today and I just thought, thank God, you know, I'm normal. Because there's a lot of um, flowering it up when you, you come across blogs and there's um, some some people find it hard to actually tell the truth and what it really is like um, so like for me I, I went through a phase of feeling guilty that I had this anxiety with motherhood because I thought god I've, you know I feel I shouldn't feel like this I've gone through all that to get to this point why am I feeling like this mm -hmm. um, but we're human that's why you know days of course I question some days whether you know am I doing a good enough job and course we are but it's just that's that's nature you know and that's that's just the beauty of it I suppose mm -hmm. and I bet now that you've opened up about all those things I'm sure so many women have talked to you how I feel exactly the same way after you've opened up about that probably yeah, yeah and that's kind of one of the reasons I want to carry on doing it is because not so much breaking the silence because I feel like that's happening already I do feel like voices are being heard and um, but I want, I really want other people to sort of document their journey because I, for one, that's the best thing I've ever done mm. because like I say, we've got that to look back on and see it, see it as a positive. If you're going through IVF, yeah, that's really hard and it's going to be tough, you know, there's no lie there, but see it as a positive. It's such a fascinating thing and like you get to see things. I mean, I've got friends that don't even know how 
babies are made you know the scientists are like oh so what i've released an egg like what you know yes how do you not know that you've got like four kids yeah but people don't know and so i feel like i've had such an insight into mm. how my babies were born and so when i look at them in the morning i'm just like wow you know you are miracles really every baby is a miracle you know i therefore not how they're conceived everything's so against you naturally to get pregnant although it's the most natural thing if yeah. you actually look at how a baby is made it's fascinating yeah. you know yeah. um so I, enc- I, I want to encourage people really to talk about it and to share their journey because there is someone out there that's feeling exactly like you are mm-hmm. um and that's not a bad thing it's okay you know it's okay to think do you know what i've decided to give up so i've spoke i've spoke to men that have been going through ivf um when i was going through ivf and are still trying um, and I've seen women that have actually messaged me and said, you know what, we've decided not to try anymore. We're going to just enjoy life together. And I think that is such a strong thing. I think, mm-hmm. wow, you know, for someone to come to that decision must be such a tough thing. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, hats off to you. Fair play, because it's that can't have been an easy decision to make. Mm-hmm. Um, because I think we can get carried away can't we and you know I'm going to keep going I'm not going to stop till I get a baby but at the cost of what you know your marriage or your sanity or your health even um so yeah it's um I would love more people to sort of you know set their own little blog up whether it be public or not just go for it anonymously or whatever do it because um it's it's a it's a coping mechanism if anything Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. what would you say or what do you say to someone who's kind of at the starting point of where you started your journey originally um so the first thing i say is just embrace it really mm-hmm. that's because it's um it can be really daunting you kind of deep breaths are a massive thing so i used to just stand and take a deep breath you know if things got really overwhelming um but like i said earlier about positive mindset um that was what was different between i had iui which i had three of them um one of them was overstimulated so i have had to have another one so four technically that failed Um, and when i was going through them it was almost like i knew i just knew that wasn't going to work i just thought it's so close to how naturally you can see i can't see how that's going to work um and so i almost didn't believe i kind of just felt like it was a stepping stone to IVF. I felt like that was a trial run before I got to the real thing. Um, So I almost knew it wouldn't work. Um, And when it comes to the IVF, we actually had a month's break before we went on holiday, um, you know, recouped, sort of refueled, ready for for what we had ahead of us. Um, And I went into it almost with the knowledge that I was going to come out with a baby. I just was like, no, you know, I'm going to do this. And, um, even what I ate, you know, I changed everything for the IVF. I gave it absolutely 100% so that if, if at the end it didn't work, hand on heart, I'd done everything I possibly could. Um, so nutrition paid a huge part um, in it as well. So, you know, you have to nurture your body really um, to get the best results. So I wanted to know at the end of it, if I was pregnant, that I'd got a, a good setup ready for, for when the baby arrived, you know. So... And um, it changes your life in a lot of ways in that manner. But um, yeah, so it's, it's, it is fascinating, really. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. What were some of the things that you did use to either cope through it or nutrition wise? How, how did it help you through the process? What did you do to help yourself through this process? No, that's okay. So I'm really sorry. Can you say that? Yeah. So <laughs> what did you do to help yourself through the process in terms of coping mechanisms or health wise? What um, yeah, did you do it? Yeah, so what I did was I had, um, I went to see a fertility acupuncturist mm-hmm. um, and she even came to my house actually, bless her. Um, I, met, I, I went and seen her and sort of talked about, I went through long protocol at IVS, so you get a, a few different kinds. Um, and she she seen me at different points throughout the process, so when I was in down regulation where they were suppressing my natural cycle. Um, and then again, when they were stimulating to create, you know, the embryos and the eggs, just say, um, it was, so that was one thing that I did, which I, again, I think is a massive thing. It helped not, not necessarily the fertility side, which for me, it did obviously, but again, mentally, it was just to have that time out 
to relax, to sort of regroup, if you like, and sort of center yourself and think, right, slow down a minute, just take it all in. Um, and she encouraged me to listen to Z to West um, like CDs and things like that, which I did. And again, that was about positive visualization. So I used to take half an hour every day religiously throughout IBS, where I would lay down in my own space and just have half an hour of just relaxation, me time, and visualize things going on. So that was one thing that I did, so acupuncture. Um, another thing, I didn't tread on eggshells, so a lot of people um, feel, and me as well actually, I did feel a bit nervous. I used to think, oh, you know, like I shouldn't go for a walk because stupid things like, oh my God, what if the embryo falls out? And things like that, that's what people think. Yeah. But I just carried on as normal, and I just believed that if it was meant to be, it was meant to be. I didn't want to sort of just lay there bedridden thinking, you know, please hang in there. I didn't do any of that. I did just a lot of positive thoughts. And I, every time I got a negative thing, thought, you know, like, what if they don't, what if they don't stick around? Or mm -hmm. I just kind of tried to eliminate that and just breathe it out, really. Mm -hmm. um, but acupuncture, I would highly recommend, definitely. If, if, if I think people are skeptical of that, but, um, but no, I think it was a massive help for me just to get some time out really from the rat race. Mm -hmm. What have you learned going through this whole process? Cause it sounds like um, a lot, a yeah. lot actually. Yeah, a lot. So it's a, to think, I think the biggest thing I've learned is to trust my body. So although it had let me down, um, how I see it or how I did see it for many years I felt like my body was letting me down mm -hmm. it wasn't because I do believe things happen when they're meant to mm -hmm. so although I want you know I desperately wanted a child given what we'd gone through in the years coming up to IVF I'm actually glad there wasn't a child involved because um that would have been even harder so that's one thing I've learned is that it was meant to be at that time I knew you know that was my calling was, you know, June 2013. That was when I, sorry, 2014, um, was when, you know, was my time basically. But I knew I was put on this earth to be a mum. So mm -hmm. yeah, I believed it would happen. So I wasn't let down. Yeah. Would you change anything going through it? If you had a second go at everything? Um, I don't know. What would I change? That's a really good question. Mm -hmm. Um, probably to actually be probably to be more open with Keith um that was one thing because I was venting on kicked about babies you know sort of anonymously we didn't talk too much about you know how it was affecting each other like I say the, the men get left out so much but you know it wouldn't happen without them so um so yeah I wish I wish we'd have sort of communicated more through it because I think he's he's learning a lot from my blogging now you yeah. know he reads my blog obviously and I think he learns more about me through that than we do in our own living room you know <laughs> yeah isn't it so funny that yeah, yeah I think it's so funny sometimes that women have another outlet and myself included I'm like writing these things out it's very therapeutic and you can say things without worrying sometimes what someone thinks directly so it's and then when you're actually sitting down and discussing with someone it's very different what comes out mm -hmm. oh yeah yeah it is that's right and that's it's really strange because um with with the people that i meet through this mm -hmm. i'm really open and honest about things probably that i don't even speak to my own husband about yes. i think that's probably because we're all women i don't know but um not all women there are men following my blog as well but mm -hmm. um no they they men do get forgot about you know they don't get they don't get the hype they should have because they go through it as well and they're actually worse with their emotions so they hold everything in don't they they don't speak as you know easy as as we do mm -hmm. um yeah it is it's really strange because i think that's what was the shocker when i sort of came out and said this is what we were doing although i hadn't kept it secret so much um that we were having ibf i just didn't divulge exactly what was you know the thoughts and feelings behind it mm -hmm. um until kicks out babies was born sort of thing um so yeah, I think that was quite a shock for people to see, oh my God, oh, you know, keep in space, they've just gone through that, you know, because I think people just presume or, you know, but you get the, the usual questions now, so, oh wow, you know, do twins run in the family, you know, and you sort of think, 
we used to sort of go yeah because it just used to be easier but now we're like well no or you know we actually have IVF because some people and um, some I'm not even sure who I can't categorize them but Mm-hmm. Some people find it really uncomfortable. You can tell, you know, as soon as you say, oh, they were IVF twins. I don't know if it was a generation thing, maybe. But, um, but yeah, sometimes you can see, like, oh, oh, IVF, you know, wow. Because not everybody agrees with it either. You know, some people feel like you're playing with God and all this. I don't understand that myself. Um, mm-hmm. uh, but, you know, it's, it's, it's tough. It's yeah. tough. Yeah, I'm sure it's, I mean, it's like talking politics at dinner, right? Everyone has a different opinion and... Exactly, that's right. Things, yeah. And unless you've actually been there, been through it, or, you know, craved a child like we did, um, then you, you're just not to know. Like, silly things like um, people that we know that have had babies, you know, they get to just go home and take their baby home, like, the day after they've had them and things. We didn't have that. So that's why I feel so compelled to sort of shout from the rooftop sometimes, I'm a bit like, hang on a minute, you know, we didn't have an easy ride to get here. Yeah. Um, so that's why I kind of wanted my voice heard, really. Mm-hmm. Um, and I used Kickstart Babies to voice it. So. Yeah. yeah. And that's the thing, because for every, I don't know the stats, but say for every 10 women who are having a baby, quote unquote, normally, I mean, I can't, I don't know what the stat is for women who are going through IVF or having different, different challenges through pregnancy. It's an overwhelming amount that yeah. it's, like you need to shout from the rooftops what you've gone through the women who have going through that know that they're not alone i think i'm not sure don't quote me on it but i do think that it's a lot i think it's one in six in the uk yeah. um that are dealing with um you know infertility mm-hmm. so but i mean it ranges from so many different things so you've got women that um, are dealing with their men having a low sperm count or it could be the you know male factor it could be blocked tubes polycystic ovaries there's so many different reasons why and that's why I urge people to go and get checked if they aren't conceiving I mean that was one thing for me we tried for years I'm not exactly sure how long um, but we tried for many years and it wasn't until we were actively trying so you know ovulation sticks and things like that that we it went on longer than it should have I should have gone to the doctor a lot sooner because I, it could have been something else and it's Again, it was like a bit taboo and a bit embarrassed, you know. So, you know, if you think you've been trying long enough, you go and just get checked for your peace of mind. It's your, you're in your right to it's your body. And, um, yeah, it's, it's one of them. And I think the clinics differ as well. So, like, with us here in the UK, obviously, we're really lucky to have the NHS fund a lot of our IVF. Um, but, you know, some women I've met, they've spent absolutely thousands. And this is something that you know they've they've not chose to go down this road you know they desperately want a child and it's like you're almost yearning like well you're almost sort of grieving a lot you know that you've you've not even had a baby but you are grieving for what you could have had and it really is quite a difficult thing to sort of to go through emotionally like that Mm -hmm. because in where you are in the UK because I'm in Canada um how does it work is it funded for you guys like do you think I mean, obviously different countries have different systems, right? How is it for you guys? Yeah, so for us, it depends actually, you po- it's kind of like a postcode lottery. So right. you could go to one clinic and they would say, um, you know, you've got um, one round of IVF and that's it. Um, you could go to another clinic and they, like my clinic gave me three rounds of IUI, um, which is intrauterine insemination, um, and then on to IVF. Okay. Um, and also I think they categorize it by different things. So they take into consideration your age, um, you know, whether you smoke, um, lots of things can go against you or for you. And they choose from, they sort of tailor make sort of the package if you like. Um, but yeah, from where we were, we were just given that one round. Like I say, we're so lucky to even have that because you yeah. know, other people don't have, have that. And I can't imagine having to sort of fund it's a lot of money it's not a cheap thing to do you know you can't just go to the supermarket and come back with a baby it's a huge yeah. investment yeah yeah how do you think if there was an ideal system in place what would that be for fertility um, for me i think that i think we help um with with us here in the uk i do feel like the nhs i've not got a bad word to say against them they've done brilliant things for me um but i do feel like um 
I feel like it's unfair because to me, I always see it as an illness, if you like. That person hasn't chosen, they, they just want, they want a baby, you know, and I think everybody should be entitled to it. And so for some people not to get that, I would love to see something change. I would love to see everybody get that option. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's really sad that, you know, you have to fit into a certain category to be even, you know, thought of, oh, you know, we'll let you have this X, Y, and Z. And I know, obviously, it all boils down to money and things like that. I know that. But again, this is politics, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, this is the ideal world where money is not an yeah. issue, right? It's women yeah. have the world. Yeah. Yes. yes. What are you most grateful about today? What are my most um, voices being heard, actually? Mm -hmm. So for you to reach out and just sort of give someone like me the opportunity I think it's fantastic because there, you know like I say there's women out there who have gone through hell of a lot more than me um so I feel really honoured that you've reached out to me but um so yeah I'm thankful that I'm thankful that voices are being heard and that you know there are there are actually companies out there that are willing to sort of um have the raw detail and rather than having it filtered and sort of flout you know sugar coated and everything um the the people are being heard you know they, they're listening now to the, the raw details and that's actually what people need to hear instead of all this flower coating we just you know it needs to be raw and that's what we're we're doing so thank you for letting us no well like i said it's my pleasure it's, it's i love amazing women like you have gone through these things and it's i'm just providing the outlet right it's everyone else who's gone through them so thank you, thank you. Yeah. So do you have one woman who's inspired you throughout the process or throughout this journey? Um, I'd say there's, there's two or three, actually. Yeah. That I've, that I've, I won't name names, but there are some women on this journey who will know who they are. And um, they have gone through either the same as me or more than me or gone on to have another baby naturally. And they inspire me because I just think, you know, well done to that person for share because they're people that have shared their journey and mm. um, so yeah mums in general i think they're all here right <laughs> yeah oh my gosh yes yeah <laughs> <laughs> definitely mm -hmm. what's your definition of perfectly imperfect oh my definition of perfectly imperfect oh i don't know you've got me <laughs> perfectly imperfect um i really don't know i can't think of anything I'll, off the top of my head that's okay uh we can come back to it if you want um what do you have a definition then yeah <laughs> do you have a definition for powerfully passionate do you have a definition for power oh, yeah okay um take two so what is in like basically like sh shouting from the rooftops yeah like just kind of like what you've been saying kind of in terms of voices being heard or how come you now I mean you started kickstart babies anonymously but now you are so passionate and you have this fire inside you like what how did it how did this happen like what changed in you to become this way um I think just literally the realization that life isn't it's you know things aren't handed to you you have to really go for it and if you want something just set your sight on it and keep going you know you'll get you'll hit a brick wall sometimes break it down and just carry on and if you if that's what you want keep going basically mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yes there you go that was a good answer yeah <laughs> so now i have two kind of things okay, go ahead. no that's okay i was just going to say i have two things to wrap up with um one final question but first i wanted to thank you first stacy because everything you've gone through and i know what kind of what i was and drew me into your story and how you were so honest going through everything and and you said the good and the bad, and it was just such a snapshot into a daily life of what IVF would be like and through the whole journey. And I know for so many women who have gone through that, and I know other women who have gone through that in my own life, it means so much to know that they're not alone going through that. And for them to be able to reach out to you and have someone like a sister on, no matter where they are in the world, to be able to talk about these things and for you to understand them, that's, but yeah, thank you for doing what you're doing. And, uh, yeah. yeah, no. And now uh, my last question I usually finish off with is what's one thing or one piece of advice that you want earth girls or anyone struggling or finding something difficult in the, the, their life or feeling alone to take away from your story or what's the message that you want to give them? 
um, just know that we've all reached that point where we, we think, do you know what, this isn't going to work. And we've all reached the point where you can't, you do give up hope. Mm -hmm. um, but my advice would be don't, you know, just as you can have bad days, but get, you know, you can cry in the corner, but get back up again. Have, have a bad day. That's fine. But, you know, we're all human and just keep going is what I would say. Keep going, you know, dream hard, you know, dream, believe, achieve. Yes, I love that. Um, now I lied because I'm going to have one more question, but what's the best way for women to get in touch with you? Because I know you have some exciting things going on in your life. Kickstart yeah. Babies is your Instagram account. But yeah, what else? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. My Instagram or Facebook, I welcome um, private messages or you can leave something on my wall, I'll reply. Um, but I also have a website that's being launched at the moment. So um, it hasn't yet. Um, it's in the process. Um, and when that's um, live, that will be kickstartbabies.co.uk. Um, my email address is kickstartbabies at gmail.co.uk, dot uh, com, should I say. So, um, but yeah, however you want to contact me, you can find all the details on my Facebook page. Awesome. And for all the listeners, I'll have that posted below the YouTube video and on my blog as well for anyone who wants to get in touch with Stacey and let her know how amazing she is and all the stories she shared. Or if you have something that re resonates with you, then then we know how to get in touch with you. So thank you so much, Stacey. Um, mm -hmm. That was all the questions I had. If there's anything you wanted to say before we kind of sign off, uh, go for it or if you're good. Just thank you so much for what you're doing for, for connecting all as women together because we're in it together. So thank you so much for taking the time. It's been lovely. Yeah, well, you're welcome. My pleasure. I love all you ladies. So it means the world for me. Thank you. Thanks so much for checking out this video. If you liked it, be sure to actually like below and subscribe for more. And let us know what you thought on Instagram. These stories are here to empower you to unearth yourself so you live powerfully passionate. So you embrace your imperfections and find purpose in your story. You are not alone. And together we can turn our struggles into our strengths. Until next time, two weeks. The world needs women who have come alive. Unearth yourself. The sky is the limit or thrills.